Are you many enthusiasts? Right, today's little job, get these brakes fitted. So if you saw my previous video, these are secondhand calipers. Obviously I bought new discs and new pads, uh, but they were very clean and tidy. They're the 8.4 inch vented and grooved Paddy Hopkirk uh, calipers from Mini Sport. Um, and we're gonna fit them on Vinny. So I've just given everything a clean up. Um, I've got to fit the shims on the back of the pads, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, but aside from that, pretty straightforward job. Uh, the discs didn't come red like this. I've painted them like that. And you're probably gonna ask, why have I done that? And I'd love to tell you there's a legitimate reason for doing it, but there isn't really. I thought I'd just paint them because this bit goes all rusty, looks horrible when you look through the wheels. So as with anything red, it always adds about five brake horsepower, but no, I'm lying. Uh, it makes absolutely no difference at all. It's purely just so when you look through the wheel from the outside, um, you know, these calipers look really nice and it's just to stop this bit going all rusty. So that's just painted with hammer right smooth right um, I don't think the heat on them will be too much of an issue might do but generally the paint doesn't burn when it gets hot it just goes soft so I'm gonna stop waffling let's get this done so as best practice even though it's only been MOT'd recently whenever you jack it up before you take the wheels off it's always worth just giving them a wiggle and a shake and a good look round just to make sure nothing's worked loose or there's nothing wearing out so pretty straightforward to begin with it's just getting everything dismantled and I'm just starting there with the track rod end just because that needs replacing again unfortunately because of a split rubber boot so we count the track rod end off the number of turns it comes off and in theory if it's the same track rod end going back on the same length if you put it back on the same amount of turns the tracking should be correct just slacken off the brake hose while the caliper's still fitted because it's quite difficult to do once it's unbolted and then remove the split pins to take the brake pads out and compress the pistons back in inside the caliper so I will keep hold of these discs pads and calipers because they're not very old on Vinny I think they've probably done about 5,000 miles just giving it all a uh, clean up while we've got the opportunity to it's not perfectly clean Vinny it's tidy but um, it's five to six years since it was last sort of stripped apart and rebuilt at the front end so it's still reasonably tidy it's not quite up to show car standards but it's it's good enough And now we're just swapping over the drive flange onto the new vented brake disc. Just giving it a really good clean up. It's really important to make sure that mating surface is absolutely spotless because you get a speck of dirt on there, you'll get the uh, brake judder. Just a bit of anti-seize compound between the two surfaces so that when it has to come apart again, it will do. And what I found there was the the new uh, disc or dry flange to disc bolts are a different thread and very, very slightly larger than the AS sized bolts that were originally on there. So just needed to enlarge the hole very, very slightly. I think I've run a 10 mil drill bit through the holes. I think they might be three eighths originally, so it's a you know it's a very very small difference. So these EBC brake pads come with uh, anti-squeal shims, uh, which are self-adhesive, 
3M and they go on the back of the pad. Uh, they're just to stop vibration. Uh, vibration causes noise in the form of squealing. Um, so no copper slip or lubricant required on the pack of the back of the pads, just uh, anti-squeal shims. We'll probably put a tiny little bit of anti-seize uh, on these edges where they contact the inside of the brake caliper because they, they do, they can stick there a little bit, but there's no uh, anti-seize or copper slip on the back of the pads themselves. So this is pretty straightforward. The pads are slightly oversized, so you just need to trim them to size. Just get an idea of how much I need to trim off. Do the other two now and then we're ready to fit them i thought i'd just mention and i might be wrong here so someone please correct me if i am but these pads come with pad wear wires so i've already chopped the wires off there's two wires that come out of there to a plug of course minis never had pad wear indicators on them um, and i'm pretty sure uh, these pads the shape of the pad would have originally been for a rover metro um dp oh look at that dp2627 uh rover metro van reliant simeter so the metro did have pad wear wires on it so you never need them for a mini just chop the wires off you can leave the little plastic bit in there it makes no difference well i'm glad i read these instructions which is unusual for me to be honest i've done brake pads hundreds of times um so yeah reading instructions seems a bit pointless but i thought i'd have a look anyway but it points out the, the brake pads have a braking coating on them, which is like this red coating here. Uh, it's a mild abrasive, and it's just to help the brake pads bed in. Uh, it takes about 50 miles to wear that off. Um, but it also mentions about uh, bedding in the brakes um, over sort of 200 miles, and they don't reach sort of optimal performance um, until they've been used for about 1,000 miles. Well. That's about two years in Vinny. Um, I've got a track day booked in a month's time, but I'm glad I read it first. Um, I'll certainly try and get a couple of hundred miles on it before the track day, and then take it easy for take it easy for the track day. To be honest, um, track day for me and Vinny is just a bit of fun. I don't drive it competitively, so I won't be that hard on the brakes. To be honest, but I'm glad I read it first. So. Otherwise, I might have just fitted these, left it and gone straight down for the track day. Wondered why the brakes were rubbish. Um, so, yeah, just a hint for you. If you're buying these EBC pads, um, upgrading your brakes for a track day, make sure you put some miles on the car first. So, very important to correctly torque up the drive flange to disc. If you overdo it, it can cause the disc to crack. And, of course, underdoing it is not great because it will come loose. So I would always recommend that you look up the torque settings yourself just to make sure they are right for your car. But on Vinny with this 8.4 inch vented disc setup, they were set to 57 newton meters. And important here to make sure the brake hose uh, is not twisted. It's much harder to do on a braided hose because they're a bit stiffer but it's very easy to do on a rubber hose and if you get even just half a twist in the hose it can affect the flow of brake fluid through the hose itself and you can get a brake imbalance. It'll also fail an MOT test so to do it properly you need to slacken off the bolt, slacken off the pipe uh, and then um, twist the hose accordingly so that when you tighten it up in the caliper it's not twisted. Like I say, um, I think for MOT, actually, if it's got more than half a twist in its length, it's a failure. And now we're just talking up the uh, brake caliper to hub, which I set to 52 newton meters. And the pads are going in there. They do just have a very slight smear of anti-seize on the top and bottom mating surfaces that fit inside the caliper themselves. But as you'd have seen me mention earlier regarding the sort of anti squeal shims, no anti seize on the back of the pads.
So that'd be another track rod end we're replacing just because the rubber's perished on it. Track rod end itself is fine. It's nice and tight. I think we're about two, three years old then. Um, you see they're barely rusty. So just put a bit of paint on these first. But what I'm gonna do is just put some rubber dressing on here to help try and stop the rubber from drying out. So that means I'm gonna to have to redo the tracking afterwards. So really, if you've replaced the track red ends, you should do the tracking as uh, a matter of course anyway, but I was kind of hoping if you've got like for like track red ends and they come from the same manufacturer, in theory, it um, shouldn't make any difference if you're winding it back on the same amount of turns, but it's probably best practice to do it anyway. So just need to employ a bit of help off the wife to help me bleed the brakes. Uh, yeah, just all the way to the floor. And up. Yeah. Down. Yeah. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. And we're nearly there now, just the main hub nut to go. Uh, and on my mini the torque setting, 200 newton meters. And then you tighten it up to the next hole for the split pin in the castle nut. So like I say, with all the torque settings, don't take my word for it. Uh, go and check what it should be for your mini because they are different. And just before we go back together, quick uh, once around on the grease nipples. And that's us pretty much done. Oh, uh, finally, just a bit of wax oil on the brake pipe union. Oh, there we go, guys, all done. Just in case you're wondering what the inside of Vinny's wing looks like but yeah pretty straightforward as I say the only thing which I didn't think is fantastic is it's got a bleed nipple down the bottom here there's no provision to put it in the top so the calipers are obviously not sided so on the other side that's fine because the bleed nipples in the top on this side it's down the bottom uh, which really doesn't make it easy to bleed air out because the air obviously naturally goes to the top but as you can see, I just took it off, turned it upside down, bled it with it upside down. Sometimes I amaze myself and it's not always in a good way. So I was just sitting there uh, editing that video, uh, watching it when I'm talking about the bleed nipple being fitted <laughs> incorrectly and I'm completely wrong. So let me explain myself. I'd already done the offside front uh, and I couldn't quite complete the offside front because I had a problem with the um, braided brake hose. Basically when I took the brake pipe union out the top so I could twist the hose 
uh, the thread was damaged in the top of the braided brake hose. So I've ordered a new one. So with the offside front, I just dry fitted it. I put the caliper on just to get it out of the way. Um, so it's not sitting on the side here. And all I've basically got to do is just fit the hose on that side now. Um, so I've obviously done that without thinking. So when it got to doing the near side, uh, obviously I've got the calipers on the wrong way round. So like I say, silly mistake. Can't believe I've done it. I can't believe I actually filmed myself saying that I thought that the um, uh, there was no provision for a bleed nipple in the top of the caliper. No one's perfect. Uh, ignore the last bit. And um, yeah, uh, let's get the tracking done and give it a road test. Thank you.